welcome back in this session we'll continue with the discussion about spawn evolution now in the last session i saw that the spawn evolution involves four operations one is the folding operation second is the shifting operation and third is the multiplication operation and fourth is the addition operation now in this session we'll take an example to illustrate that indeed there are four operations in spawn evolution all right so let's start and let to illustrate the other there are four operations let me take a very simple example let's suppose x of n is 1 2 <coughs> and 1 so this is a very simple example let's suppose this is x of n in same way h of n is 1 comma 1 so this is very simple example to just take this yes indeed and this convolution operation has four operation is in it. so let's start so the first thing is let me plot these by us so let me plot these sequence of signals so let's plot these signals so this is it let's of c what x of n so this is x of 1 2 3 4 जीरो So let's go into of C. Part into of M. M is zero, one, two, three, four. And so this value of C is one. The value of this is one. The value of this is one. The rest of the sample is one. Zero. Rest of the sample is zero. Now let's concentrate on the summation formulas. <laughs> so these are the formulas. So I can either use this one or this one. Let's illustrate using this one. So the first operation that I have to do, I have to obtain the folded version of h of n. And first, let me illustrate that what's the difference between x of n and x of k. Now remember, the only thing that changes from x of n and x of k is the independent variable. So the value of signal will not change. So this is x of k. Log it for the temporal of k. Now k will again take the same value, zero, one, two, three, four. So this is zero. This is one. This is two, three, four, five, minus one, minus two, minus three. Minus four and so on, and now we can write the values again. You can see the values are one, two, and one. So the values are one, two, one, one, and the rest of the sample is not zero. So now have a look, have a look at this between and compare this x of n and x of n. The only difference is independent variable is different. Same way, I do obtain h of k. So we can h of k. So we can write the value zero, one, two, three, four. This is k minus 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 two. Now let's write the values. You can see the values will be the same. Only difference is now the independent variable is k. So that's the only difference. So now the formula that we are going to use, we are going to resort to the first one. So we can simply use it. So k, h of k. So this formula can be just we have to give shift and fold h signals. So let's first fold it, then do the shifting. So first operation is fold, and so let's fold it. Fold the means. This 
Let's replace cable. 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 Let's So let us write the value. Okay, first we can use zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, So this will be h of zero. You can check h of zero is one from zero and x. When k is one, this will be h of minus one. You can check h of minus one is zero here. These values are zero. So h of one is zero. So this will be h of one is zero. When k is two, this will be h of minus two. You can check h of minus two is zero. So this will be zero. Same way h of not three will this will be zero. This is zero. Now put k equal to minus one. Now I put k equal to minus one. This will be h of minus minus one. So that's h of plus one. Now you can check h of plus one is one. So this is one. So this is our h of minus two. And if we put k equal to minus two, this will be h of minus minus two. So that is h of plus two. Now you can check h of plus two is zero from here. So this is zero, and the rest of the same thing will be zero. So this is our h of Minus k, so we have obtained the folded uh, this edge sequence. So we have obtained the folded edge sequence. Now the next operation is the shifting operation. So the next operation is we have to do the shift of this. Now how do we start doing the shift of this? See the goal in this is to obtain the value of y, that is r y of m for different values of m. For different values of n, as n goes from infinity plus infinity, now we have to derive the values of y for all time. For all time, so I can start giving the shift of h of h of minus two towards the left or right. So let's start giving the shift first towards left. We start substituting negative values of n. Negative values of n. And if I start with n equal to minus infinity, this will give me the y of minus infinity. So that will give me y of minus infinity. And if I use the formula here, I know from the formula, this will be simply k running from minus infinity to minus infinity x of k h of minus infinity minus k. See, we don't know where is this minus infinity actually. We don't know why this will occur. So let's give a practical value. Let's suppose n is equal to minus five. Let's start with this value. Let's start in the minus. We'll give a shift of minus five towards left. So let's see what will happen. Okay. A job minus k seconds. So the second operation that we'll do is give a shift. So the second operation is a shifting operation, and we'll shift to h of minus k by minus five seconds. In other words, our goal is to first derive the job minus five minus k. What is the sequence? So we'll do it graphically. We'll do it graphically. So this is a job minus five minus k. And again, if you don't know how to get the values directly, means if you don't remember the shifting operation, start doing it by step by step. And it starts with the number values of k. And get the values of this. So this is k equal to zero. This is k equal to one. K equal to two. K equal to three. Four. Five. So this is minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, and minus seven. So let's put k equal to zero. If I put k equal to zero, this will mean h of minus five. You can check h of minus five from here. You can check it, it is zero. h of minus five is zero. So h of minus five is zero. So this is h of yes, minus five. Same way, if I put k equal to 
uh, one now. So let's first obtain the values of h of minus four minus k. Yeah, then k is positive. So when I put k equal one, especially h of minus five minus one, that's h of minus six. So this will be minus four minus one. That's h of minus six. H of minus six, you can check, is zero. H of minus six is zero. So you can get the values zero, and these values will also be zero. So you can check the values will be zero. <coughs> now, next thing is we have to do. Let's start with the negative values of k. So when I put k equal to minus one, this will be h of minus five minus minus one. This will be h of minus five plus one. That's h of minus four. Now you can check h of minus four is again that's equal to zero. So this is zero. And if you continue this, h of minus four is zero, this h of minus two is c, this will again be zero because this will be h of minus four plus two, that's h of minus three, h of minus three is zero, you can check. So say if I put k equal to now minus three, this will be h of five plus two, so that's h of minus two, h of minus two is zero, as again, so the value of this instance is also zero. Same way if I put k minus minus four, this will be h of minus five plus four. So this will be h of minus one, you can check it is zero. So this is again zero. And if I put k equal to you know, this k equal to one, if I put you know, this k equal to five, this will be minus five plus five, h of five is h of if you be h of minus one plus one is h of zero. And h of zero you can check is one. H of zero is one. You can check H of zero is one. So you can say the first sent non zero sent can go to here. Then if I put H of K equal to plus six, this will be H of minus five. Plus six, this is H of one. You can check again H of one is one. So this is H of one. And again, the rest of the samples is H of minus one, minus zero, and zero. So these are the values. Now, what's the third step? Third step is the multiplication. So, that means the third step is the multiplication. The multiplication between what? Third is multiply x of k with h of this n minus k actually, and we have n equal to minus five. So, this, and when you do the multiplication between h of this and x of k. Have a look. If you multiply this, let me redraw this. Let me redraw x of k here so that you understand this is minus one, minus two, minus three. This is minus four, this is minus four, minus six, minus four, minus eight. Minus eight, this is one, two, and so on and so on. And the first value here is first non zero value of this is a n equal to zero, and this is a n equal to zero, and this is one, and this is again one. So this is one, two, one, and the rest of these values are zero. The rest of the values are zero. So this is game. Now have a look at if you multiply these two. If you multiply these two. The sample values are zero also. Okay, this is zero everywhere. So this is zero. And if you multiply the corresponding sample points, the values are zero, 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 zero. Now what's the fourth step? What's the fourth step? Step is add these points. Let's add these up. You know these are zero everywhere. You can say that the y of minus five that will be the ratio equation will be the as in this y of minus five for this multiplication, and you can see the value are zero. So you can see the result is zero. So the result is zero. So y of minus five is zero. So this was just an example. Now if you continue this, then if you continue this way to n equal to uh, minus four, that will reveal y of minus four, and you'll see that will be zero. When you put n equal to Minus three, this will give you minus three, and you will see this is zero. Doing this operation, when you do the shifting operation, 
folding operation, multiplication operation, and addition operation, this will be y is equal to minus 2. Again, this will be 0. Now let's check the value when you put n equal to minus 1. Let's compute this value when n is equal to minus 1. First, let's let me draw the wire. So I draw minus one minus k. So let's draw this. Let's draw the box. So to draw this. So let me draw this. This is h of minus two minus k. So this will be k. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is minus one, minus two, minus three. Let's start substituting the values of k. So this will when you put k equal to zero, this will be h of minus one. H of minus one is given zero. You can check h of minus one is zero. When I put k equal to um, one, so this will be h of minus one minus one. So that's h of minus two. H of minus two, you can check from that again zero. When I put k equal to two, this will be h of minus one minus two. That's h of minus three. So again, that's zero, and you can check rest of the sample. Huh? Zero. Now, if I put k equal to minus one, so this will be h of minus one minus minus one. So this is h of zero. You can check h of zero. Okay? H of zero is given. H of zero is one. You can check from x equals. Same way, if I put h equal to sorry k equal to k equal to minus two, this will be h of minus two minus two. That's h of one to minus one plus two. That's h of one h of one is given as one again you can check so, and the rest of the sample that you know zero now again what's what's the first step so this is first was the folding operation second was the shifting operation now you have given a shift of now minus one and if you see the result and then you have to multiply this with this h of minus one you just let me do draw the sequence here so we draw x sequence again here so that we can go from the multiplication. So this is x of so this is x of k. This is k, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. If I have the value, this is 1, and this is 2. And this is again one and just of the same thing. Zero so this is one thing. Well, now if you multiply these two, you know, if you multiply h of minus one minus k corresponding sample point, you will see the results are zero everywhere. The results are again zero everywhere. And the fourth step is the addition operation. And the was y of minus one, you can check y of minus one. You can check y of minus one is. If you multiply this, you can add So the values are zero every. So the values are zero and so the values are zero from this. Now put now we'll next we'll put n equal to zero. So that will give us y of zero. That means we have to compute y of n minus zero, n minus k, that is zero minus k. So this is chop minus k. So to come to this point, we have to be only you know, this this means simple the folding or oh, same fold that's in it. So we have to here we have to simply fold that sequence. So this is h of minus k. We have already drawn h of minus k. Have a look at that. This is h of minus k. This is h of k. Let's because we have to perform the multiplication operation between these two. So this is x of k. Let me draw x of k again. So this is 1. This is 2. This is 1. So it's 1, 2, 3, 0. So this is 2. This is 5. And this is 1. So this is 1. Minus two, these are again zero. So it's a one, two. And now our goal is to multiply these two. Now if I multiply, when we multiply the corresponding sample point, this is one, this is zero, so the result is zero. When I multiply this with this, so the result is one multiplied by one. 
and then we have next we have to multiply this with this so again it is zero multiplied by two that's zero and so on you can see this is zero multiplied by one and so on and then rest of the minutes so are given zero so this is how you perform it and so now you will see the multiplication is only non-zero at one sample point here so the fourth operation fourth will give us the like so it will give us the addition and so from the addition we can increase so this is equal so the first non zero sample of percent when n is equal to zero so the first non zero sample of percent n is equal to zero you can check next what we'll do we'll obtain y of one how do you obtain y of one means put n equal to one and this in other words means we have to compute y of one minus k so first let me draw y of one minus k so it will be y of one minus k sorry h of one minus k h of one minus k this is k and so it will be zero one two three four five minus one minus two minus four so first let me put k equal to zero this is h of one now you can check h of one is given as h of one is one you can check from the given sequence put k equal to one this will be h of zero h of zero is again one and rest of the samples are zero rest of the samples are equal to zero now the second step is multiply this sequence with x of k let me redraw this again and again See, so yeah, I'm drawing x of k again and again so that the multiplication becomes easier for you guys. Right? So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So I'm performing the multiple. You write it first with the value. This is 1, and this is 2, and this is 1. 1, 2, 1, and just now the same result. 0, you can check. Now the next. Operation. See, we have to have shifting and folding. We have to put more next is multiplying. Now, multiplying the corresponding sample point, this will be one multiplied by one. Then multiply this with this, it is non zero. Then multiply this with this, this is one multiplied by two. So this is the multiplication, then zero multiplied by one is zero, 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 and so on. And if you multiply this with this, it will be zero multiplied by zero in the next operation. So this is the multiplication operation. Now the third, actually you have to draw it. I'm not drawing that. You can do that so that from this will obtain y of one, is one is equal to one, and operation is perfect. Addition between these multiplication. So this is so this is so y of one is the next real obtain. The value of y when n is 2. So, what we have to do is to put h of 2 minus k. So, we have to obtain h of 2 minus k. You can check. So, this unit you was first fold and you were shift off two units. You were shift off two units to x sequence. So, this is h of 2 minus k. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 1, minus 2, minus 2. So if I put k equal to 0, this will be h of 2, h of 2 is 0. If I put k equal to, if I put k equal to 1, this will be h of 2 minus 1 is 1. So h of 1 is given as 1. If I put k equal to 2, this will be 2 minus 2 is 1, 0. So h of 0 is 1. You get 2. Check it, rest of the same result zero. Now we have to multiply this with x of k. x of k is given here. Now if you do the multiplication between the corresponding sample points, first we have to do the multiplication between this sample and this sample. You can check it is zero multiplied by one. Then we have to multiply this sample with this. It is one multiplied by two. Then we have to multiply this sample with this. It's one multiplied by one. Then we have multiply this and with this it's again zero and if we do the multiplication for negative value which not mentioned zero which is zero so this means zero multiplied by zero now the third operation 
of the last operation that we require two or three systems of these multiplications. Okay. So, so this is how we will turn now to next is put k put n equal to next is put n equal to three let me as well have now y of t now y of three simply means we have to obtain h of three minus k not obtain h of three minus k So this is h of three minus k this is k this is zero one two three four five minus two minus three minus four so start substituting the values of k in k is zero this is h of three h of three is zero so k equal to one this is h of three minus one is h of two is zero K equal to two. This will be h of three minus two. That's one. So this will be h of one. So this will be h of one minus one. Put k equal to three. So this will be h of three minus three is h of zero. This will be one. And the rest of the same things will again be zero. Okay. So how do I obtain by the way? Actually, these values are these are actually these are given to me by the function of time n r k. These are given to me. Okay. This is the given sequence. So I'm not actually writing the values from there. So this is h of three minus k. Now we have to put the multiplication with x of k. So let me read on in this function. K. This is k equal to zero. K equal to one, two, three, four, five. Minus one, minus two, minus three. And then let's write the values. This is one, and this is two, this is and the rest of the same goes as zero, zero, one. And multiply the corresponding sample values. When we start with this, this is zero, this is one. So this will be zero multiplied by one, then I multiply one, sorry, zero with two, this is only zero. Multiply this sample point with this, this will be one multiplied by one. And then I apply this with this, so I'll be with this three. So this is going to be zero, then zero, then zero, and the zero, and same thing. So this is the same thing. And then this is the third operation, which is the multiplication. Now the fourth operation is addition operation, and that is the first one, three. So this is a zero, plus zero, plus zero, plus one, plus zero, plus one, plus one. And if you want to compute y of four, so you have to put h of four minus k, and then you multiply h of four minus k with uh, h of sorry x of k. You see the result is zero. Y minus y of four is zero. So similarly, y of five is equal to zero. Y of six will be zero. So in short, y of n. When n is less or equal to zero, when n is less or equal to zero, is equal to zero. Sorry, less than. So when n is less than zero, and then y of one, y of n is equal to one, when n is equal to one. Okay. Right. Let me check the one. Y of zero is one, and y of one is three. Y of two is again three. So this is y is equal to three and n is equal to two. Y of n is equal to three and n is three. So this is the y. This is y coming to the zero. This is y coming to the two. So the fourth y of four is. So 
So we can write this, this sequence like this. So we can write it in the sequence form like this. So this is 0, 1, 3, 3, 1, 0. And we can show the number into the 0 0.2. And right, so we can plot it also. So we plot this line of n. So y of n is 1. Y of, y of 0 is 1. Y of 1 is 3. And y of 2 is again 3. And y of 3 is 1. This is 1. 3, 3 is 1. And the rest of the sample is of 0. So y so this is our C. So this is our Y and C. So this is how you obtain the convolution graphically. So let me repeat the procedure again. So let me repeat the procedure again. So actually there are four operations in this vertical evolution of this convolution. So there are four operations. So there are four operations in so convolution first of all. Is easy to compute the output of a system, and we can use either this formula or not formula. So, and if we go in the, inside this convolution, we'll see there are actually four operations to compute y for you know, any value of y. Why we have to actually do four operations, you know, and we have to actually do four operations that we can perform either x of x of h and the operation dollar folding operation. Shifting operation. Now, if I use this summation, use the first summation, then we have to fold the H sequence. If we use this summation, we fold X sequence. Same way, shifting will happen in the same signal and which the folding operates. So the shifting will happen. Then we have to perform the multiplication between the shifted signal and one of the sequences in the PD and factorize it here. And then once we multiply the sample values, we have to take the addition of the sample terms, we multiply sample values, and that will give us the first one given by n. And to illustrate this, we take an example, very simple example. We say x of n is 1 to 1, and h of n is 1 to 1. And we obtain the convolution between this. Now we start with x of n and h of n, then we just can give the time variable, we accept n by k. And so the sequence will be seen. Then we started with a folding operation. So when we replace it, so that we obtain the first sample term. So that we obtain the first sample, we folded x sequence. So we did this sequence, and we obtain h of minus k. And then we shifted this. So to obtain the values of this, we have to shift them. And we have to get the values of y, the small values of n. And we started with n equal minus infinity. We don't know where actually minus infinity, so we start with spectacle value n is equal to minus and we obtain the shifted h of minus by minus k. So this is the shifted signal. So the shifted signal does not be a shift of minus k to h of minus k. So this is the shift of the shifted minus by minus shifted to one to left. So then we once we shifted it, we multiply the h of minus I am in scale with x of k. We start a multiplication with zero everywhere. So we sample value. We multiply the sample value because it's everywhere. Then we go from the condition that will give us minus one. So that's one. Then we repeat the if we repeat the procedure for n equals minus four, we just fold it and give a shift of minus four. And we start the multiplication again like right a zero everywhere. And so that's one and zero. So, same is true when we have minus three, same is true when we have minus two. Then we repeat it, of course, we have to do this. We saw the result is again equal to zero. And we can have the application of the final result. Then we can have the zero, we saw this is true. And in the result of the final, the multiplication of the final is non zero only when n is equal to zero. This is when we set the control of the given shift on this zero sum. And then we have these two, then we have to do the right. So we of the multiplication. That's it. So one. Then we repeat it for one, for two, and for three. And so on. This is how we do. So we do the sequences. And this is how we check 
So in short, so the convolution is not a simple operation, but it has four operations. So convolution has four operations inside it. Four operations and the four operations are folding, second is shifting. So there is multiplication. Forces action. So these are the forces. So that's why convolution operation is not a coordinate operation. It's actually a really complicated operation. And I that now is four operations. And these are the four operations. And one more you know, this observation. If you check, if you check, please have a look. Check it at your place. If remember this, if x sequence varies from minus L to L and H sequence varies from minus P to Q. Now what will be the duration of Y sequence? What will be the duration of Y sequence? What will be the duration of Y sequence? Now the duration of Y sequence will be simply from minus L plus P to minus P. So the duration several this. Now, what was the duration of X sequence here in our example? Zero to two. Okay. This from zero to two minus zero to two. It is non zero to zero to two. <laughs> and same way the duration of X sequence from zero to two. We can check it. Now the duration of Y sequence is from zero to two. And then I'm just plug this, just plug this here. So you can check out the duration of this system from zero to okay. you can check. This is very, very important. You can show this. So, all right, let me end it here. I hope you understood. Please repeat it step by step. You will get the, and that's, and that's the practical understanding.